Okay, time to move on to the new stuff. Um, let's see. This needs gold and dice games. I think we can do that. Yeah, that sounds good, actually. Let's go here, Finn. I, I don't even need to read the other ones. I, I think that sounds good. Um, for this, you need Colbjorn. How do you... Can you switch? I actually don't want Colbjorn. <laughs> I don't even care. I, I think you can switch in the little camp thing. But I want to finish uh, Malaclipse's thing anyway. Um, unlimited Brimstone. Okay, I guess we'll add this. Uh, Elder's Gift we'll definitely take. We'll take all this unknown stuff. Although we're going to run out of cards if we do that. That's actually a bit of a problem. One of none of these give gold. Maybe we should do like half of them. But the thing is, then if we win this, li nah, it's fine. No, nah, it'll be fine. That's okay. Um, do any of these match up with what we need? This can give gold. Oh, exquisite blade can be sold for a lot. That works. Um, this is good against thieves. That works too. Anything else? Uh, this is stun defense against. A brief stun to thieves. Okay, good. And extinguisher against fire. Nah, I won't keep that. Gambler is abs That's amazing, actually. If we can get this, that'll help a lot. Because it said there's going to be a lot of dice rolls. Ring of food, we don't know what it does. We'll take it. Um, we'll take the new helmet. We'll take the new armor. We'll take the other new armor. Probably not. We've only got a couple weapons. We probably want a shield in here. Like this. Right? I think so. Uh, you've met some good gypsies who were good to others and hard workers, but people still saw them as gypsies. <laughs> well, yeah, gypsies don't have a good pop, uh, good reputation. I mean, I don't haven't even seen one in my whole life, and I know that. What do we want to bring with us? None of these are good against thieves. Although I think these are okay against thieves, and they give us a token. So yeah, I guess why not? Oh, we can bring two things. Oh, sweet, bring some food too. Um. You're glad for your fiancé. You consider yourself extremely lucky, especially because you met in the most ridiculous way possible. Yeah? You got a good story? Dalton, don't, don't, don't tell people where we live. <laughs> don't, don't do that. That's true, yes. I live near a college in a major city. And I would agree with you that a lot of the women are, are sad. Both sad themselves and indicative of sadness. What of The Witcher 3? Haven't haven't played it. I think you asked that before. What? <laughs> I, I, have, I haven't played it at all, so I have no opinion, because I, I haven't gotten through Witcher 2 yet. I really liked the first Witcher, and I know a lot of people didn't like it as much as the second one, but I really liked the first one, and I got kind of bored with the second, but I want to pick it back up. With Malclips' encouragement, what's a few murders in the grand scheme of things? You find yourself sat opposite the op opulently dressed leader of the Thieves' Guild, or one of the leaders, it's a shadowy organization were you too specific no it's just i don't know it's just a weird thing to bring up you know I don't know. takes a sip of wine and leans back to savor the taste i am scheduled i am scheduled to be assassinated the new assassin has been determined and so the tale begins i believe the suspect is one of my own with subtle nods, he indicates a bearded man, a woman with red hair, and a man with gray eyes. Borden, Rowena, and Grindon, my three personal silencers. One of them left me this note, I am sure. When the red candle's flame burns out on his last evening in the Mulberry Inn, the false priest will have his sins appeased. He points out the red candle upon the fireplace. The assassin favors theatrics over secrecy, it seems. Find the assassin for me. To do that, you will likely need gold. Thieves will tell you anything for gold. Um, who, who are you? I'm known as Father Galfrey, though it is not my true name, of course. I keep track of the accounts in this region. A note was left for me in the inn. I know, yep. What, what's Borden like? Borden is the eldest in my employ, a simple, nervous kind of man. I highly doubt that he would have the heart nor the finesse to assassinate me, unless he has hidden his true nature all this time. I'd say you'd have to pour him a few meads if you want to talk. If you want him to talk. Okay, nice. We're getting clues. I didn't expect like a fucking investigation quest. But uh, all right. 
Rowena has been one of my silencers for, a long, for as long as I have been in this position, and that is a very long time indeed. I asked that she infiltrate the 3rd Legion of the Imperial Army and eliminate their captain. She did so, of course, as efficient as anything. I suspect that she is only truly loyal to gold, but she's quite a valuable asset to the guild, so it would be a shame if she intends to assassinate me. Grindon has been in my employ for some time. He's prone to making the most preposterous claims, many of which are untrue. I'd be wary of his exaggerations, even if he isn't the assassin, and especially when he's had too much wine. Find the ass- oh, yep, cool. And with that, he waves you away and you retire to bed, wondering how Malaclips talked you into this. Hmm. Oh, dice! The potential of cards based around fame. Oh. If you can force them from your deck and into your hands, you can begin to exploit their power. Um, apparently, there's no platinum equipment in my deck, okay? Looks at your pale, pale eyes. May the deeds of your greatness be... Okay, would I have gotten platinum equipment there if I had some? Always keep this is kind of shit. Alright. Lest little hands find idle work. With a snap, you feel something being yanked off your person. You've been ambushed. You turn to see a few goblins running away, giggling and pointing at you. There's no time to check what was stolen. You rush after the thieving devils. Some highwaymen emerge from the bushes to protect the goblins. Thieves Guild. The fuck? <laughs> Thieves Guild can't even... Alright, alright. They can't even control their guys, really? You know? Like... Help the Thieves Guild out and they're still sending goblins to, to fight me? There will ever be a place for small hands and quick wits. Defeat dr goblins quickly to avoid losing your items for good. Thieves attack more frequently while goblins are alive to protect the spoils. Uh, we should have. Uh, we should have used the. Uh, should have used the shield. Oh, okay, come on, come on, please. Just kill the fucking goblins. Why do they have so much health? That one doesn't even have a bag. <laughs> Do I need to kill that other one? Seems to not have anything. Oh, I lost my attack right then. This combat's a little harder when you're just focusing on like one like one guy, but there's still a crowd. I guess let's kill this last guy. I mean, it says to kill him before they escape. Uh, it's close, it's close! There, there, there. Okay, we're good. Now we can actually do this for real. Ah, uh, fuck. Or we'll just keep getting hit. Alright, not bad. Not bad. Oh, and then it just keeps going. Got it! Alright, I understand. Fuck! This was a, this was a terrible battle. And we're not even going to get anything out of it. Like, basically, we're just getting our shit back. You just got to find one that... Oh, we're talking about basic bitches now. All right. You just got to find one that isn't too fucked up and just keep her in check. Personality is meaningless. She will become the girl you want. <laughs> All right. Used to be a serious World of Warcraft role player on private servers. Unlike official servers, check private ones are filled with serious and incredibly talented people. You play on these servers since 12, and you liked spending more- Since you were quite a nerd, you liked spending more time playing fantasy because most people around you were fucking retarded. They cared about looking good, parties, and stupidity. So are you telling me that you, you met your wife? Or your, your fiancé? On a World of Warcraft? Because that's, that's, that is a funny story. You take your brigand's blades back from the unconscious goblins. As, you, as soon as you awake with a- As soon as you do with a sputter. The goblin in question awakes and flips away from you, giggling and escapes into the forest. So goblins are colluding with the thieves' guild now. With the thugs defeated, you search their bodies for valuables. Ooh. Don't starve. Lose one max life instead of ta taking starvation damage. Interesting. And it's armor, which is just good. But I actually want this blade so we can sell it and make money. We're not going to equip it. Perfect showpiece. Barely usable in combat. <laughs> Can't wait for part two of this story. Yeah, you looking for it? Yeah. You like how the goblins look? Yeah, I like their little cigars and shit. Like, they look... 
I don't know. The Empire to provide the fodder for your own challenges. I understand. You visit your contact in the Imperial Armory. You must be planning for trouble if you've come to me for help, he says with a knowing grin. Tell me, who are you hunting? I'll see if I can find the vault of contraband items. Thieves. You tell me you're hunting thieves. Not an uncommon practice these days, he comments, heading for into the vaults. Billy Clubs, nice. Uh, 20 gold, oh. Wait, I could get in a lot of trouble if anyone finds out I took it from the vault. I'll have it sent to you when I can, or I could pay 20 to have it now. Oh, okay, uh, that works. Cards will be put back on top. The dealer moves the card to the top of the equipment deck. Oh. Once again, hmm. return to the inn, seeking clues to save a life. Return to the inn for the night. Oh. Memories. So many things are left unsaid and clouded. Why this life? Why this inn? So you rarely found a girl who you really liked. They were immature and mostly very stupid. So you spent the most of your days in the game and studying. But playing World of Warcraft finally paid off. She, when you were 18, you met your wife on, World, uh, on a World of Warcraft server. Unlike me, she was a newbie. I was quite a veteran, so I simply whispered her in-game and tried to help out. And because she wasn't role-playing her character well, to be continued. Jeez, I need to st <laughs> I'm like uh, teasing everyone reading these stories now. I didn't realize. Although it's really his fault, it's just... You enter the Mulberry Inn and find Father Galfrey in his, at his usual table by the fireplace. You sit down across from him. He scratches some numbers on one of the many rolls of paper strewn across the table, then glances up at you. Three days until the assassin comes for me, and three suspects. How apt. Three days to uncover the liar. I would like you to follow one of my silencers on a job, trading trust for information. Pay for it, if you must. I'll go on a job with, uh... Wait, why would an underling want to kill you? We all covet gold. That is why we are in this business, no? If somebody has paid a high price for my head, then there is little I can do. He considers his wine for a moment. I'd imagine the assassin is more inclined towards lying. If you can root out the liar, you will uncover the assassin. And it said they will lie regardless of their personality. It's like, this guy lies, but this is on top of that. They should be lying. We're going to start with just Borden, I think. Borden is going to pick up some lamps from shipwreck, shipwreck ports that have been, let's say, repossessed from their owners. You note the meeting point on your map and retire for the night. Here you are, helping thieves challenge thieves without a thought for their ultimate victims. Well, I don't have a choice, do I, Game Master? You've railroaded me into helping thieves. <laughs> I don't get to choose this. The guild. The guild. Is that where we end? Wits or weapons. Perhaps both will fulfill you here. As you approach a bridge high in the mountains, you see that it is already occupied. From your viewing angle, you notice that the bridge structure has been damaged. With luck, you may be able to knock out one of the supports with a thrown object, causing the bridge to collapse. Will you risk throwing one of your belongings at the bridge, or charge head rock? Oh, let's just throw a rock. Quick look around for a hefty stone. Oh, apparently stone finding is very hard. Oh, oh, shh. I have to hit those little blue, the little silver things? Oh, okay, okay, I see it. I see an opportunity. Oh, it... Ah! Do you know how many quests or areas there are? You must harness your will and find the quiet stillness inside you. Well, there are, uh, it seems like all the places are modeled after the 22 Arcana of the tarot cards. Um, so I'm assuming it's 22. Because, you know, there are all those little, different little archetypes, like the Fool, the Lovers, the Hierophant, the Magician, all those. There are 22 of those, so I'm assuming there are 22 levels. Mm, light weapons are the weakest against Empire Armor. Oh, okay, we should, get, we should do a little switch. Um, Exquisite Blade, I guess, would be better. It's actually the same as my other blade, just nicer looking, I guess. We'll do that. The axe is more powerful, but it's two-hand, I'm pretty sure. Okay, that'll do. You simply whispered her and had a few- and gave her a few tips. You wrote fucking walls of text about World of Warcraft lore. This continued for many, many, many days because she kept whispering me and even a and asking even more questions. 
So as a friendly man, you kept ha helping her, teaching her. Her role-playing skills improved, but you started to talk a lot about your real lives. Why do I keep reading these before you finish the story? <laughs> I should just wait until it's all typed out. To be continued again. Oof. One thing I gotta say about this game is it the combat. I mean, it's similar to Batman, where uh, in Batman you kind of like, even though the combat's kind of shit in the Batman games, like it's very easy. It feels good. In this game, the combat is actually good, and it feels good. Like like dodging attacks and like blocking and shit. It 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 feels good. Like it feels like you're really have an impact with every hit, and like it, it might just be the slight rumble in the controller that helps a bit. But also just like seeing your guy roll around really fast, dodge an attack, it's just it's good. Something about it. Very good production is what I'm saying. They've uh they've done well there. Especially for an indie game made in Australia. I don't know why I don't know why it being from Australia matters, but I don't know, I don't I don't think of good games when I think of Australia. So it's impressive. I'm impressed. When am I going to stream Slithery? Uh, Slithery? How are you? Slither.io? Uh, never. I'm never never going to stream that. Sorry. Not- I'm not into it. I, I've played it before. I mean, fucking everybody has. Or Agario, or, you know, those games. But, like, whenever I play it, I just feel like, man, I could be doing anything else. I could be, like, there are so many things I could be doing right now that are not this. And, man, I should just do those. Blades built to enforce justice. Australia matters because just getting to work is a matter of survival. Well, then I guess if you you look at this game like a like a ultimate work of art, you know, a grand achievement for all of Australia, this would be like in museums. Look, we did something. Of course, nobody will be able to visit those museums. But when am I going to get a thought cam? Hmm. Do you mean, do you mean like a, like a, is that a webcam? Or are you look, are you asking for a little, little screen in the little corner of the, of the stream where I just like stream some other, some woman, like a face cam? Uh, uh never. Never, ever. On the other hand, the idea of just having someone else, like just some wo some woman in the corner there's like a little little thing to watch while you watch. That's funny enough that I'd consider doing that. Uh, let's sell the sword. And let's sell these blades. Oh, they got a token on it though. I guess we'll keep them in case that comes up. Um, gambler's jewel seems very good for this, and I think we want to keep the rest of our money. Through more than a few hands. Yeah. Every gambler loses eventually, even when the deck is stacked in their favor. A game of chance or two, perhaps. Ooh, we get the extra rolling right before this. This is, okay. Beside an em a busy empire road, you spy a ramshackle stall, whereupon a few ramshackle people are seated on stools, rolling dice. You approach the stall, and behind the table is a little girl practicing a poorly tuned violin. Beside her waits a squat woman. A squat woman? Cla <laughs> is that like what you see at the gym? Squat women. Uh, f clad in flowery apron. Welcome! Have a seat. Do try the spice cakes. I baked them this morning. You want you, know, you want me to go full cam whore? Uh, <laughs> this is not gonna happen. Sorry. Okay, story continued. Here it is. Funny thing is, you didn't believe her that she was a woman. Well, yeah, I mean, you know the internet. Yeah, exactly. Everyone could be anything here. So she, like a boss, sent me her Skype and proved her gender. It was honestly a relief. From that time, we kept calling every day, talking more and more about our lives, and finally decided to meet. We both were in the same city, quite far away from each other, but still in the same city. Wow. Weird. Well, I guess it's a, it's a Czech private server, so it's not that weird, I guess. Let's play die. Let's bet uh, all of our money. Well, the most we can do. Remember, Poppet, it's double or nothing. Berta hands you... Uh, Berta. Hands you three well-worn die. 
If your high roll is your if your third roll is the highest, you'll win enough to buy your sweetheart something from the market. If your third roll is the high oh. So we're not just going for oh. Okay, so we lose. Now for your second roll. Oh! Oh! I see. Oh, never mind. Okay, I got it. Uh, so we just need a low roll. Something low. Low, low, low. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, good. Good. No, that's perfect. No, don't re-roll. No. Re-roll the six, I guess? I have to re-roll. Okay, re-roll the six. Doesn't matter, because we already have a 12 as our highest. Now this is going to matter. Need a 13. Come on. It's not that high, right? Oh, yeah. If we roll six here, we can do this. Well, or like a four, I think. Or a five. There it is. Nice. Congratulations, dear. You've won 32 gold with your original bet of 16. I could do more. Two more times, I could do more. Let's do it again. I think dice is our, our game. I mean, now we're just betting our winnings. You know what I mean? We have nothing to lose from this. Uh, why'd you add two to the score? That's shitty. I mean, I guess if it adds it to all of them, it's fine. Yeah. Back to the bones. 13 again. To be their master. But it's make... Oh, no, that's good. Okay, good. And one more time. Just give me... Give me the same sort of result we had last time. Come on, something good. 11 plus 2. There it is. And we were saying the RNG was against me. Come on, let's go for let's go for go for the gold. Three in a row. Set. Oh shit! That is that's okay. Never mind. We lost. There. That is impossible, basically, to get more than that. Like we would. Oh. We've lost. Yep. You continue to impress. I need to get like three sixes right here. Or a six six five. Yeah, I didn't think so. A six five five, I don't even think would be enough. Yes. Yep. Alright. Well, altogether we won sixteen. Time to go home. Yeah, still an increase in money, still very good. Keep exploring. We want to check the guild. Time will tell. You travel to shipwreck port by wagon. You ride in relative silence until Borden turns to you and asks quite seriously, What do you think of the boss? He's hard to read. He trusts you a little less. Ah, shit. At the ports you approach- yeah, Okay, okay, he, he, he knows what we're trying to do. At the port you approach by a pirate bearing a load of stolen lamps. Borden goes to give him a sack of gold. Presumably payment. The unusually pale pirate shakes his head. No. He pulls out a rusky bucket and his sword. I want blood. There's. Borden looks at you expectantly as if you shouldn't protest. Give your blood. <laughs> okay. Ten. Oh, this is gonna be great. Oh, no, this is great. Permanent injury. Permanent injury. Borden trusts you a little more. Yeah, I should fucking hope so. Just like. Ugh. You retrieve the crates of stolen lamps and pile them onto the wagon before setting off. Why the fuck was that okay? What? Oh, story. Story continued. We had a great time, which led to a real date after. We uh, kept meeting more often, and even after you were apart, you kept playing more World of Warcraft, which was great. And when enough was enough, you moved together in a relationship for two years. Then you, this year you proposed. She said yes, and you're getting married next year in summer. Well, oh, good for you. That's a... That is an interesting story. I wouldn't I wouldn't expect that to be the way to meet a woman. That's why you consider yourself very lucky. Yeah, I guess I'd say so. Eight years of play, of pointlessly playing a pointless playing resulted in a future marriage. Yeah. Yeah, that's lucky. <laughs> when you ride like certainly I wouldn't ever recommend someone do that as the way to meet someone, but uh, I guess it worked. When you arrive at the drop-off point, Borden is seized with a sudden emotion. I'm sorry I asked to give you blood. I'm a terrible person, aren't I? Comfort him. Oh, comforting people is very hard. <laughs> oh, not that hard. Oh! Uh! Oh, okay. Shit. Borden trusts you considerably less. 
Gordon wrings his hands as if he would very much like to leave. I should go. What's your favorite food? I don't know if I should be telling you that kind of thing. <laughs> Why? Uh, here's eight gold. He nervously takes your money. Come on, favorite food! I don't know why we're asking this sort of shit. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Oh, blackberry tart, or maybe apple tart. Borden begins to sweat, seemingly from the pressure of the question. Rings his hand. Okay, some sort of tart. Ask about his family. Eight gold. Here you go. I don't know if these are important at all, but we'll see. Oh, reroll, please. We have a reroll, right? Yes, yes. Okay, we should be able to do this. Actually, wait, let's just reroll all of it. Like, it's a 50 50 chance of all of those being bad. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Good. Borden looks sadly to the ground. She left me for a traitor. You don't want to probe any further. Oh, ouch. That's. that's sad. Um, I don't know if I should be telling you that sort of thing. Eight gold again? Nice. I was a farmer before this. What do you think of Father Galfrey? You're probably not going to tell me a straight answer. The boss always makes sure we get our cut. You can't ask for any better, really, in a guild of scoundrels like us. You should go. You wonder how much Borden told you today is a lie. Hmm, okay. Seemingly not much useful information, I'm going to say. Be prudent to review what my silencers have said when you have a quiet moment. Perhaps you will catch a lie in the process. Um, talk about my goblin problem. Goblins? From our guild? He scratches his chin in annoyance. Their loyalty to the guild is tenuous at best. Here, take this. So much folly begins Ooh. and ends with crime. This item will always be stolen instead of other equipment or gold from goblins. Nice. A funny bunch, goblins. Uh, let's go with, uh... Rowena, I guess? Rowena's been tasked with kidnapping the child of Lady Fielding as they journey to the capital. Oh, good! We can help with the kidnapping. You wouldn't recommend finding someone in a game, but if you do, gamer girls tend to be either extremely chill or amazing or a little... And amazing or a little crazy, your fiancé is both. Good luck, friend. <laughs> That's, uh... Good, good luck. Rowena has... <laughs> Personally, I avoid crazy, but but good luck. It sounds like, you know, may you have a happy future. Rowena's been tasked with kidnapping the child of Lady Fielding as they journey to the capital. You note the meeting point on your map and retire for the night. Alright. Why is it recommending I camp? Good. Oh, to review my stuff. Review Got it. Clues you have learned so far. Um, I think I'm good, actually. I don't think I need to do that. <laughs> they say madness can be a blessing. Not I, however. I would never be so thoughtless. <laughs> the journey comes with some confusion regarding logistics and food. What do children even eat? Malaclips had cried. Okay, this is a continuation of Malaclips. Malaclips. Malaclips's quest. In the end, you manage to bring the mage children safely to the madmen near Forstford. Their home is an ominous building with high gates, barred windows, and faint screaming coming from within. It passes an, as an asylum disquietingly well. Right, we'll just drop off these little munchkins and be on our way to get that cure. Malclips leads your ragtag bunch to the main door before turning to you and saying seriously, please perform the secret knock. Um... Nakatoon. Malchus wipes an imaginary tear from his eye. Beautiful. Simply a masterpiece. That wasn't the secret knot, but I accept it anyway. <laughs> then he merely pushes open the unlocked doors. Oh. He's, he's fucking with me. I got it. You don't need it. You like a little bit of crazy. It makes life more interesting. Good, good luck anyway. <laughs> uh, then he merely... Okay. You are met by two tall men. Identical twins. Dressed in patterned nightgowns. Era of the Veil told us you'd be coming, one of the twins say. I'm Barry, and this is Mary. They call us the Mad Men, but it's only a name. They shove you aside and hurry the children. <laughs> oh, just a name, okay. We're good sorts, aren't we, Barry? His, not, his twin nods as he brushes the children's hair and hands them nightgowns. Yes, indeed. But sometimes I forget we're merely acting, and I do mad things like setting that farm on fire. 
Keeps the rabble off our trail, though, don't it? Mary nods as he brings out a plate of warmed spiced breads. As the children warily settle to eat spiced breads and butter, Mary asks you a favor. We'll need your help clearing out this place. Hasn't been an orphanage in a long time, has it? Not fit for children! The monster's in the burning room, Mary. Barry, <laughs> Barry notes while cutting carrots. Uh, I guess I'll go kill the monster. Barry leads you down to the cellar door. It's in there. I've had to resort to going down to town or to buy our pickled vegetables. They scream like banshees when I ask them what blood they've pickled them in, though. Huh? Barry, huh? Barry closes the door behind you. You follow the steps deep beneath the fortress until you find yourself in an underground cave. Oh, Dalton, you're leaving? See you. Hear a guttural moan. Oh, just this? Oh, this will be fucking easy. Oh, these oh, these are really good against this guy. Holy shit, this is like the perfect weapon for this. Wow. Okay, whoa. whoa, whoa. Okay, fuck that up. But now he's dead. That's fine. I think I mentioned this before, but uh I am working on getting that uh the some emotes done. I got a friend of mine who is willing to do them for free, which is great. Cause I was gonna, I was gonna pay someone on Fiverr, but a friend of mine's a pretty good artist, and I think he could, uh, he could do it. But he's got like, he made the dumb decision of going to college, so he's got to finish finals first. But then that's like this week, so we'll have that soon to look forward to. You'll finally be able to rub your hands, everybody who has the the sub, and if not, you just get to look look at him. That'll be a joy. You poke at the dead thing to see if it holds any treasure, but find nothing of value. Malclips rubs his shoulders nervously as he gazes into the creature's cold, dead eyes. With that dealt with, you return to the kitchen. Mary boils sheets in a massive steel vat while his brother prepares radishes for the stew. Their, tummy, their tummies full of warm bread, the children find comfortable spots around the kitchen to nap. Extinguish the burning room. As you approach the stairs, a man in rags rushes past and barrels into an adjacent room. He peers out at you with mad eyes. That'd be Freda, Mary says behind you. He kept trying to climb Forstford's clock tower, so they sent him in here. He's harmless. Freda slams the door closed, then open, then closed again. You arrive at the burning room. The room is literally on fire. Everything has been reduced to ash inside. Somehow, magic is keeping the fire contained within. Malclips, you got an idea? The maid shrugs. Perhaps that's the answer. He points to a chubby, lizard-like creature the size of a small dog. It watches you cautiously from the corner of the room. A fire salamander. A hatchling at that. I thought them long extinct. The, the, uh, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, try to placate the flame creature? Hmm. Hey! Nice. Your friend should do 3D porn as an artist. Or he'd probably make a lot of money, but I know he wouldn't do that. <laughs> You coo and offer cake to the- I mean, if you want to make por if you want to make money as an artist, furry porn. It's unfortunate, you know? It's- it's- I would never recommend someone do it. It's- I'm sure it's degrading work that would make you just want to end it. You know, end your life. Every day of your life. But you would make so much money. <laughs> That's the way to go. I mean, if you're okay with, you know, selling your soul- to make some cash. That's the way to do it. You coo and offer cake to the fat little lizard. Int where did I get cake? Intrigued, it waddles over to the door frame, lipping, licking its lips. You notice the flames recede as it approaches. The flames have been extinguished, but the room continues to smoke and smolder. Malcolm, you got any idea? Still pointing at the- Okay, walk in. With the salamander calmed, the flames recede and the room becomes cool enough to enter. The chubby creature clambers up your leg, snuggles into your arms, gibbering softly to itself. The little beast gags and convulses in your arms until with a tiny squeak, it coughs up an item that painfully drops onto your toe. Oh, okay. Elegant, but possibly effective. Bank? But why furry porn? It's... You know, I don't know what... I think it has to do with the fact that furries are just kind of messed up in the head anyway. And so something about that makes it so they spend more money. I don't know exactly what it is. I just know that, like... They do spend a ton of money 
on porn. Like, more so than probably any other group of per people in the world. Uh, because most people don't, don't pay for porn. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they do. I don't, I, I don't get it, right? It's just an observation. And an observation I've heard repeated a lot of times. Like, apparently it's pretty well known. Uh, furries, they, they, they'll shell out the money for some porn. On the advice of Malaclips, those ones are prone to spontaneous combustion. You release the little creature outside. It gives your palm a warm little lick before it patters away to the cliffs nearby. Step closer to a cure, perhaps. Hmm. If it is as they say, my interest is piqued. With the problems resolved, the madmen insist you stay for supper. Seated on opposite ends of a comically long dining table, you shout conversation at each other. Malaclips takes quickly and jovially, jovially to the shouting. How do you know Malaclips? Yes, Malaclips stole some scrolls from the orphanage once. The bard chokes into his bull. The madmen seem nonchalant about the transgression. You were just a boy, but it doesn't make it right. We'd like those scrolls back someday. With the problems resolved, the mad... Oh, yep. Uh, what do you think about the Empire? General calamity, isn't it, Barry? Mary shouts as he hands out hunks of bread. Barry nods. I didn't think it would be so bad. I wouldn't... I wouldn't think they were so bad if only they didn't try to kill all us magic folk. Not to mention what they did to poor lizard men. I remember, Barry continues, when my silk trader was a lizard man. Now they're all dead except for that bloke hiding in the city. Weren't, Malchus bells back, weren't the lizard men wiped out centuries ago? Barry scratches his crooked nose. At least you think he did. He's so very far away. Yes, it has been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> okay. These 3D artists make really a lot of money, especially those who make 3D animations. If an artist is good enough, he'll earn $2,000 or more on their Patreons. Yeah, that's what you see with the furry artist stuff too, and also porn games. There's a guy who literally makes $13,000 a month by making horse porn. This is the world we live in. <laughs> Thanks for bringing this to my attention. I knew about, f just like, like, you, are you talking like not anthropomorphic, but just horses? Like just, just horses? Cause that's, that's depressing. I mean, <laughs> I'm not, not okay with that. <sighs> you yell across the table, the stew is delicious. What? He says there's too much carrot in the stew. Malakliff joins in, the madmen look at each other confused. No, we can't marry you. Yes, I will marry you, Malaclips replies. He reaches for his loot. Real Amskirk wood. Thank you for noticing. As you finish your stew, Malaclips brings out his loot. After the second song, the madman politely suggests that it's time for you two to leave. The children giggle at the bard's silent indignation. The mage children peering out behind them. The madman near Forceford wave goodbye at the front door. As the door closes, your companion collapses on his hands and knees, blood oozing from his mouth. He pulls himself warily to his feet and groans. This cure can't come soon enough, coin slave. You're gonna check. You needed to delete your browser history anyway. Oh. <laughs> Good luck with that. The, you know, try to keep your sanity. Uh, okay, we got goblins. The thing is, though, we've got that ring, so they're just gonna steal the ring instead of anything valuable. I guess we still want to kill them, but it's not really a problem. Like, I'm, I guess I'm just gonna kind of ignore them a little bit. And just focus on not taking damage, since we are a little low. Nice helmet. I like that it actually shows up in this. I don't know if I noticed that before. But I, that's, a, that's a minor thing that I wish more games did. Just when you put on new equipment, you see it. Like, I understand why games don't do it. Especially if a game has a lot of, a lot of equipment. A lot of different kinds of equipment. That's a lot of assets. To, to make, for just that. But it really, I mean, it's really nice. <laughs> you know? I think it's worth it. Alright, let's just kill these goblins. We might as well. I think we can do it. There's only one other... There's only one thief left anyway. Yeah, I mean, this should be easy. Where's the other goblin? There he is. He doesn't even have anything. But I... I don't know. Not sure if it would still count or not. Oh! He's dead. I thought that cigar sticking out of his mouth was his nose at first. I was about to be a, <laughs> a little confused about the direction of the art in this game, but... 
take back my thieves folly and they leave they've stolen all my food what I kill them and they steal my shit anyway I guess we'll buy a little food uh, buy this the problem is we really need money but I mean we need food too so that'll that's fine cool don't don't cook food shit I didn't mean to Mulberry in? No. Need to go to the guild. It was your actions that necessitated these additions to the game, you understand? I knew you were approaching and tailored things around your lust for fame. Hmm. You follow the sounds of hammering in the town hall. Inside, a tiny man stands upon a stool, chipping away at a row of marble sculptures. Impressive, is it not? Sor Malafal of Cardair is a great patron of the arts. You could be too. No. You wouldn't know art if it hit you in the face, he scoffs. His chisel slips under the hammer, breaking off Sir Malifal's nose. You slowly back away as he spits profanities at you. Yeah, we don't have money to waste. Assassins. I have little love for them. Less still for the criminal guilds that fill the cities these days. Bankers. Thieves. Assassins. Merchants. Kings. Each tries to use their power to control those around them. 3D animated porn where Lara Croft fucks a horse for 14 minutes and the guy earns money from that. I, I mean, I think the point uh, here is that not just he earns money from this, you know, like, like, okay, the idea of someone in the world being willing to pay for a video clip of Lara Croft fucking a horse for 14 minutes, that's concerning but it's not like, you know, end of the world. The fact that there's enough people that he can make thousands of dollars making a clip of Laura Croft fucking a horse for 15 minutes, that's concerning. That is like, makes you question like truths that you hold dear. Like if you believed that people were inherently good, I'd like you to, to reconsider, you know? <laughs> Because there are people out there who pay good money, thousands of dollars, to see Laura Croft fucked by a horse for 14 minutes. You know what I mean? What does that say? Anyway, <laughs> you and Rowena draw your swords in unison and leap into the battle. You're gonna check how many people support him. <sighs> Too many. Too many. They, it, it could not be a good amount. There's no... I mean, if it's... If it's Ooh, that's an interesting question. What is more concerning? Thousands of people all giving a dollar here and there? Or one person <laughs> who gives like $10,000? I guess one is less concerning because it's just like, okay, that's one weirdo. The expansion of the empire requires constant conscription of new blood. Soldiers block all attacks, greatly reducing their damage. Use I think we've seen these guys before. Why is it telling me that again? Okay, we need to make sure this woman doesn't die. Uh, okay, we also need to make sure we don't die. Okay, nice. One down. Let's hop over. Need to distract these guys. No. Oh. Okay, nice, nice. That's actually not much damage. These things are not very good against these soldiers, I'm pretty sure. Probably should have switched before the battle, but I, yeah. Yeah, I should probably do that before, like, all these battles. I'm not really good about that. Oh, um, this timing is, I, I don't know. I have no excuse. Oh, oh. Ah, ooh, ooh, ah. Shit! Shit! Alright. Alright. Well. Well. <laughs> it's not great. You know, it's not, it's not Every great. failure in combat can be balanced by success. But we got some tokens out of it. We've made some progress. For making the Mad Men's Orphanage livable for orphans. The cure. Ooh, that might be the... Sounds like it might be the final part. Chance of completion. No chance of perfection now. Oh, we can still do it? What? No, that's not true. Why did you say that? What do you mean? 
Are you saying I can't even get a gold coin even if I go back? No, that's not what you're saying. Oh, wait. No, I can still get gold. Why did he say that? Why did he say there's no chance of perfection, but I can still win? When clearly I couldn't. I, I lost the whole thing. Like, he kicked me out of it, because I, I lost the whole thing. 